Hi, beautiful! Thank you for being here today. What are we doing? How are we feeling? So today we're watching some hair routines from some different people and they're all about styling thick, long hair and how to maintain that thick, long hair. We're gonna look at everything from what products they're using, how much product they're using, how they dry their hair, how they wash their hair, what temperature water they use. We're gonna pick it all apart piece by piece and see what they could do better, if anything at all. Everybody will start off with 10 points and every time I don't like something that they do or I think they could do it better, they're gonna lose a point. I'm gonna be really, really, really tough because that's what makes it fun. These are just my opinions. If you have a differing opinion, it's totally fine. I do not know everything. I never claim to know everything. This is just for fun and entertainment and a little bit of education along the way. Let's check out these hair routines and see whose routine is supreme. Let's do it. Up first, we have a video by Brianna Kwan, and it's called My Hair Care Routine for Long and Healthy Hair. Let's rate this sh shall we? First thing I want to say is hair, skin, nails, everyone's different and it's all based on genetics. Your hair's not going to grow this long overnight. If I could add a point, I would add a point because that was great. That is very true. A lot of people that just don't have good hair, it's genetics. You can definitely try and um, push back on those genetics from coming through. You can be like genetics, get the f out and use some that makes your hair really long and really thick, but some people just have naturally beautiful, gorgeous hair. So I actually wash my hair once a week because that's when I notice it actually getting oily. I feel like my hair doesn't get that oily that quickly, especially if you don't like touch your hair that often because then you're just like stimulating oil. And she's right. Touch your hair less, your hair will get less oily. Depends what your lifestyle is, if you work out, if it's hot, if your hair is blonde, if your hair is brown, you can see the oil more on darker hair, stuff like that. But once a week seems to be pretty good for most people. So these are the products that I use, they're by OGX, and it's the Renewing Argan Oil of Morocco Shampoo and the Nourishing Coconut Milk Conditioner. So both argan oil and coconut oil are really good for your hair, in my opinion. I've done my own research about it. Am I gonna find anything wrong with this video today? Because she seems like she's done a lot of research on this. Holy sh**. I have no problem with LGX. I've definitely used them before. I don't mind when people mix and match shampoos and conditioners. I actually encourage it because you can get different benefits in the shampoo and in the conditioner and you can combine them and get all kinds of benefits all wrapped in one process. I usually wash my hair with lukewarm water because I find extremely hot water makes it frizzy and then extremely cold water doesn't really do anything for me. And then the amount of shampoo that I use is about three lines worth. So if you put shampoo along the three lines of your finger, that is about how much I use. Oh girl. Oh, this is music to my ears. Thumbs up on all of this. You guys, I don't, I've never done these videos where like, she doesn't do anything wrong. I don't think anybody's ever lasted this long with a full on pen in one of these videos. So she said that she doesn't use cold water and she doesn't use very hot water. I know a lot of people like to use cold water when they're washing their hair and you know, it helps preserve your color and so on and so forth. However, you need a little bit of heat to expand the hair fiber and then get the shampoo in there and get all that dirt and grease and grime out of your hair. So if you're only using cold water, it's really not gonna do much for your hair. It's not gonna release those oils and that dirt from your hair as well as it would with lukewarm water water. And then she said she uses three finger lines worth of shampoo on her hair. I think that's a perfect amount. Any more than that would be too much. So I like to scrub my hair vertically or horizontally. You don't want to wash in circles because that is what is going to create tangles and breakage. I'm just going to let her do my job today. I have no advice for you at this point. Exactly what she said. Okay, please guys, when you're shampooing, do this motion. Don't do this. You're going to tangle the out of your hair and you're going to snap your hair off. When your hair is wet, it's at its most fragile state. So you do not want to be going like this. Um, you're also going to put little abrasions on your scalp. If you're going too hard, it's going to just all around not be good. She also, if you noticed, she did not put the shampoo on her ends. The water will go down the hair with the shampoo and it'll rinse the ends. And I leave my shampoo in for about five minutes before rinsing it out. Should I take a point off for this? She leaves the shampoo on for five minutes. I've never in my life ever 
never have heard of such a thing. We're gonna take a point off for that because I don't get it. Maybe you can educate me for this one, but I've never heard of somebody leaving the shampoo on for five minutes and it doing anything more than if you just shampoo it and rinse it out. I don't think that's accurate. So we're at a nine. <gasps> so when it comes to conditioner, I like to use about four finger lines. So I do two lines for my scalp and two lines for the ends of my hair. I like to leave my conditioner in for six to eight minutes just to really ensure that I've added moisture back to my hair after shampooing. I'm removing another point. We're going down to an eight. <laughs> I knew I'd find something I didn't like. Putting conditioner on your scalp is not gonna harm your scalp. However, it might increase the amount of oil on your scalp because the oil production from your scalp is going to hydrate, you know, the first couple inches of your hair within the first few hours. So with conditioner, you really wanna focus on the ends. What I would recommend is putting, you know, three finger lines. I like the way she says that, so I'm gonna use that reference. Um, three finger lines of conditioner on your ends and your mids and letting it sit there for as long as you can. I recommend at least five minutes just to really get it hydrated. Then rinse it off, but you do not need a conditioner up here for any reason. Unless you have a really dry scalp or something like that, I wouldn't recommend putting conditioner up there. And even if you have a dry scalp, sometimes putting more conditioner and more products with scents on top of your scalp dries them out even more. So I just recommend not putting conditioner on your scalp. Don't do that in my opinion. So I use a 100% cotton shirt just to draw the moisture out of my hair because I don't want to cause any breakage or split ends. And I never dry my hair with a towel because the material is just really abrasive and bad for your hair. Let's take a point off. We're doing it out of seven, baby. The reason why I took a point off is because she did something really great, which is use a cotton shirt to dry her hair. We need a little thumbs up here. There's no harm in using that. However, she did say that using a cotton towel is too abrasive. I just Agree. If you use a cotton towel like this, it's bad for your hair and it's going to cause breakage and tangle your hair and do all kinds of disgusting stuff. However, if all you're doing with a cotton towel is wringing your hair and squeezing it, it's really just absorbing the water in your hair. It's not adding to any frizz or breakage or anything like that. So cotton towels are totally fine. We've been using them for years and years and years on our hair and it's totally fine. Just don't go like this. And when your hair is tangled after a shower, which is inevitable, I use a wet brush because the bristles are a lot more flexible and soft. So that is mainly how I try to prevent breakage while my hair is wet and after in the shower. Oh, something I love that I just saw was that she's detangling her hair with her fingers. I do recommend if you can get away with not using a brush when your hair is wet, comb it through with your fingers and then let it air dry. Because when you brush your hair when it's wet, it's at its most fragile state and you're more prone to breakage that way. If you can get away with just using your fingers like this, you're not gonna get as much breakage and it's gonna be much healthier. Just just like your skin, your hair is gonna have different needs in the summer versus the winter. So in the winter, I like to use extra strength coconut miracle oil. I use about a quarter size of this oil. I'll warm it up between my fingers and I'll just comb it through the bottom half of my hair. And then I usually just let my hair air dry the rest of the way. In this video, I'm using the argan oil of Morocco because it is spring summer now. Okay, I love that she's using a thicker oil in the winter to really hydrate her hair because that winter breeze really does dry the sh out of your hair. And then she's using a lighter oil in the summer because the humidity, it's gonna add a little bit of hydration onto your hair anyways. So you do not need as thick of an oil in the winter opposed to summer, great job with that. I also love that she only put the oil on the bottom half of her hair. If you guys put it on the top of your head, obviously it's gonna make your hair oily. Don't go up too far. Only go up to the first third of your hair. You're gonna make your hair greasy and oily and you're gonna have to wash it more often. So don't do that. So guys, that's the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you, Brianna, for that wonderful hair care routine. You really know your shit. like seriously you did a great job i am going to give you a rating of a seven for this you are great but i can always find things wrong so let's see if the next person we watch can compare to this routine we just saw it was pretty solid so let's see what happens in the next one up next this video is by Amy Macedo, and this is called My Hair Care Routine 2018. My number one hair secret is to not wash my hair often. So I only wash my hair once a week. Again, guys, we're off to a fabulous start. You see a trend here? It's good not to wash your hair often. Your hair naturally produces oils, and those oils protect your hair and nourish your hair. And if you're just stripping them away and washing them away, it's such a waste. Like, your hair wants those natural oils. Your hair is begging for those oils. Thumbs up for that. Your scalp creates those natural oils to keep that hair sexy, fabulous, long. 
thick. You know what I mean? So you need to keep them. Don't get rid of them so soon. This is the shampoo and conditioner that I use. Because this is the first time I am washing my hair since I just got it dyed a 4N, a really dark brown, um, it ended up turning out pretty dark still. Okay. We're going down to a nine because you need to be more gentle when shampooing your hair. It's so intense. <laughs> You're gonna create tangles, holy sh Also, it's fine that she's using bond building shampoo. Um, I think that's what it is. And damaged shampoo, but I don't know. From the looks of it, her hair doesn't look at all damaged. It is also really dark, so darker hair usually hides damage. But maybe you can get away with using more of a hydrating formula rather than a damaged curing formula. Because if you use those shampoo and conditioner formulas that are made for damaged hair, it is possible that you're over filling your hair with too much protein. You're also rebuilding broken bonds that possibly aren't even broken, so you just don't need it. You could be using a hydrating product that is more of an oil base that is going to give your ends more life and your hair more shine. I'm not gonna take a point off for that because I don't really know the exact texture of her hair. I can only see it in this video, so if I touched it and I could feel it, I could make a better decision on that. So this is the Rebond number two mask. This is kind of like a preconditioner, they call it. Anyways, um, I have long hair, so I take a good amount of this and I make sure to put it all over my hair. Yes, even the roots, put it all over, and I really make sure to run my fingers through everything so that it can really evenly get all over. And I do leave this in for about five minutes. You guys, this stuff is magic. It's actually amazing, and it really, really, really softens your hair. And I find that it helps with frizzing and like baby hairs a lot. Mm. I'm gonna take a point down. We're down to eight. She's starting with squeezing into her hand and then putting it in basically the top part of her hair. I would definitely recommend you scrunch your conditioner into the bottom of your hair and then work your way up. You do not need all that bond building on the top of your head where your hair is extremely healthy. You know, bond building agents are best for parts of your hair that are damaged and broken and splitting. So focusing on the ends first and working your way up would be a lot better. So last step of course is conditioner. So I'm just gonna take some of this and mainly put it on the mid to ends of my hair. And I like to leave conditioner in just for like a minute or so. Let it kind of sit there for a little bit and then rinse it out. So I did read the directions on this rebond system and you're actually supposed to put the pre-conditioner on, leave it on for five minutes and then put the conditioner over it. I think you wash the pre-conditioner out beforehand. That's just a little error there, but make sure you guys use your products correctly and exactly how they are made to be used or else they're not gonna be as effective. I never rub my hair too vigorously with the towel, I just kind of like pat it dry. Ah, ah, music to my ears. She pats her hair dry, she squeezes the water out, she doesn't rub it. Amazing. Don't ever take your hair and go like this with the towel. Please, please, please. You'll notice too, I like to apply all my products before I brush out my hair. And that is so that when I do brush out my hair, the products can get through the hair evenly and it helps to evenly move it around if that makes sense. I also love as she says she doesn't brush her hair out before she puts the products in that is such a great idea these creams and these oils are gonna help release those tangles easier when you go and actually brush your hair putting a leave-in conditioner an oil a cream anything like that before brushing your hair is always a great thing i love this oil it's amazing it really helps with frizzing but also you know just keeping my hair super smooth so i like to apply most of that at the ends and then you'll notice whatever's left over i do trickle it to the mid and then and put a tiny bit of what's left over on the top. I'm totally okay with her putting a little bit of oil on the top. It helps make your hair extremely shiny, though it is gonna make your hair probably a little more greasy, but it's fine. And I'm glad that she focused on the ends with the oil. So to brush out my hair, you guys, this brush is amazing. But um, if you have super thick hair, you are gonna need to do what I do, which is just go over with a paddle brush that last little bit to get everything out. The other one doesn't hurt at all and it gets most of the tangles out. I love that she used a four bristle brush to brush her hair. You're gonna have to use two brushes most likely if you're brushing her hair while it's wet with a boar bristle brush because they're not great for brushing wet hair. However, they do decrease like the pulling and the tugging on your hair. But she did have to go in after with a um, more of a paddle brush to really get those deep tangles out. That's totally fine, totally okay with that. For blow drying, I wanted to show you guys what I do when I blow dry. I don't put it on super hot heat anymore because it really does damage the hair. So I try my best to keep it on the lowest heat option. I love that she's blow drying using a brush as well as the concentrator nozzle. Like, 
hate when people take the concentrated nozzle off the blow dryer and she's using a low heat setting. So yeah, my favorite thing to do is first off, straighten my sideburns. I cannot live with straight hair if I haven't straightened the back of my head and the sideburns. I love that she was sectioning her hair before flat ironing. This is so good. So she took each section and did one or two passes on her hair. That is so important, guys. Please don't take the iron and go like 12 passes on the same hair. It's so bad and you don't need to do that. One solid pass with a comb like she was using, great job with that too. That's all it takes. So that is pretty much it for my hair care routine, you guys. Ooh, that was fabulous. That leaves Amy an eight as her score, which means Amy is our winner for today. She has the ultimate hair. Routine, though she lost two points, so we'll work on this. Both of you guys have really great routines. I'm just nitpicking and being super critical, but you know, fabulous hair, great job. You guys definitely know a lot about hair, so. Product. Make sure you check out me and my hair care brands on Instagram. You can also shop any of my hair products right down below at xmodelhair.com. Today's Instagram shout out goes to Bug Bite. I don't know her real name, but that's what we're gonna go with today. I've been wanting short hair for over a year now, but I'm afraid to chop it off because I feel like my face is too round slash chubby. Is my face too round slash chubby for really short hair? Like a pixie cut or a boyish cut? I don't want to look like a boy, especially since I never wear makeup. I don't think you'd look bad. It would look wonderful. Honestly, Honestly, but you have to make sure you get the right kind of pixie cut. I'm feeling like a lot of layering inwards towards the face. Having the longer pieces end around here on your cheekbones will really accentuate the curves of your face and really define your cheekbones and give you a lot more structure as well as style it with some like pomade and give it some texture and a cool spiky vibe. I think it would look amazing on you. That is all. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to live your extra life and I'll see you next time. Bye guys.